Jim. And again, I'm Zary. And we also have with us Mary Lisa Mack. From our steering committee. Hey, Mary Lisa. We are part of the Marin City People's Plan. Um, your mic Okay. Thank you. Okay. We are part of the Marin City's People's Plan. It's funny because I used to live in Daly City. I used to work in um, Marin, uh, Marin County. Okay. I used to work in San Mateo County. So all this is like, okay, I know those places. <laughs> so our mission is actually just to empower the people um, in the community of Marin City to have them not just be a, a resident of Marin City, but to own Marin City. To have them in plan and implement, design the vision for health and resilience. So over last year, it's actually over the years, but um, last year, about 25 community members took part in a training program that was through Urban Permaculture Institute. Shout out to them, they're great. Okay, during this uh, process, we learned a lot about permaculture techniques, which was some of the same things that Katie was talking about, but without the word permaculture. I got you. It's about using nature to help control nature. So we learned how to slow the water, we learned how to sink the water, we learned how to spread the water, which is very important during rainy seasons. How many of you know what a rain garden is? Great, all right. Haven't heard that word in any of these presentations, right? So one of the things that we decided, some of the things that we learned, you went too fast on the slide. <laughs> Some of the things we learned to help um, with the flood issues in Marin City is to design rain gardens, bioswales, and rain harvesting kits. That captures the rain from the water, I mean from the roofs, from the ground, and rain gardens are beautiful. You can plant native pl um, plants, you can plant a lot of flowers, you can plant vegetation, but what it does is capture the rain to use it to slow the water, sink the water, and spread the water. So our course was, uh, we had a total of eight classes in our course, and it is very difficult to get 25 community members from the working class to commit to doing eight courses. And one of the uh, beautiful things was over the course of the, um, over the course of the course, uh, the attendance, it actually stayed closer to 25 and there are a few things that had to um, be kept in mind when considering community members like the fact that everyone works so there are members of the community who would not be able to attend this event due to the time of the day that is held also if you are doing anything to help raise the awareness of the uh, community that is one thing to take into consideration is the fact that you have uh, folks who get off at five and they have to commute. Um, also, for those who decide to play a part in uh, bringing about change, there's a thing called a zoning headache. Like, what is zoning? And why, uh, as someone presented earlier, like nature doesn't necessarily care about the lines we draw for zoning. Also, we have limited resources and uh, lack of commitment along, along with uh, trust issues. Trust issues could come from a number of things. One is uh, there being a disconnect from the county to the residents that the county is supposed to serve. And over a uh, protracted period of time of empty promises being made, you know, the way politics kind of work, sometimes some things work out, sometimes they don't, but that can uh, cause trust issues. So these are some factors to keep in mind when engaging uh, the communities that hopefully you will service or if not already serve. I'm gonna have to do a little walking with this slide. I took this slide, uh, I took this picture February 13th. It had been raining a lot. This is Marin City. Marin City is shaped like a bowl. So as a bowl is shaped, everything that you pour in settles at the bottom. 
And this is how our flood issues look almost every year and worse. So on this particular day, I was standing there taking pictures and I noticed a little boy trying to get home from school. He was over here. There's a bridge. The water is not that high right here. But he stood there confused trying to figure out how to do it. I told him to cross the street here. So he had to go down here across the street where the water was a little shallow because the water came knee deep to him. Imagine this your child coming home from school. He had to cross at this dangerous intersection right here. Walk along this area here where there's no sidewalk against the traffic, I mean, along with the traffic. He had to walk up about two blocks in order to cross the street in a dry area. Marin City chronically floods like this. And instead of facing the issue of the flooding, they want to raise the freeway because that helps other people in other communities instead of Marin City. It does make for a, uh, a nice, unsanctioned community swimming pool. Uh, <laughs> oh, and by the way, we got West Marin on the other side of that too, so if you needed a boat, you had to still walk through the water to get to the boat. So, community-driven resiliency plan. We've identified a need for community-driven planning led by us, members of the community, in partnership with experts and supporters. Why? Well, did we get a clap? Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. <laughs> thank Why do we need a uh, community-driven plan? Because the community is the experts. Uh -huh. yeah. When we go back to this uh, picture here, who would know more about this than those who live in this area at the bottom of the bowl? So when an assessment, there was an assessment done in Marin City, I believe it cost half a million dollars for someone who did not live in Marin City to come in and say, hey, you guys have flooding here, 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 and here, and uh, put together this 200 page or 300 page document to show some of the reasons why. I'm so, sorry, I'm okay. sorry. Actually, while I was standing there, I almost witnessed three accidents because people were scared to come through the water and they started backing up across three lanes of traffic. <laughs> so what uh, took place was um, first raising the awareness level. The Urban Permaculture Institute came to uh, teach some members of the community what, what is exactly uh, permaculture? What is flooding? What causes flooding? What are bioswales, rain gardens? And what is a watershed? The thing that got me, uh, that bought, that, that allowed me to have a uh, buy and a commitment was when Pandora came to the school um, that I helped to start. And she drew on the board what a watershed looks like and what it does. And when I saw the correlation between the fact that I'm uh, a citizen of the earth, I guess you could say, and the things that I do affect the earth, um, in more ways negative than positive because I was unaware of it, um, it, it, it allowed me to uh, gain an interest in it. But not only that, since I work with youth, I tied them in as well, and they became interested. So, I thought a watershed was a shed somewhere up in the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, after that, uh, eight, the eight courses that we took, a group form um, of our steering committee where we are implementing VAS, vision assessment, strategies, and timeline, where you have a eagle eye view, one who sees, and then you have the uh, assessment done, those who are aware of what's going on and what needs to be done, and then those who have uh, implementation mindset where they can help develop a strategy. And then you have those who say, we want to see something happen and not just hear you talk about it. They are the ones who help form the timeline. And we've been meeting every week since last year. Um, and this is a picture uh, with some of the youth who are involved in it and Pandora teaching them about uh, some nature tips. But this is a way that we raise awareness and we activate community members and homeowners. And this is how uh, our, our first group, uh, we're looking to get a uh, intergenerational cohort where we are tailoring the youth with the uh, elders in the community to bring about the changes that are needed.
Okay, so why the community needs to participate? It's because you have public officials that will spend $500,000 to get their experts to come into our communities to tell us what we want, like as if they know, and what we need. We have experts right there on the line. We have experts right there in our own community. We took the class and we went out and started watching how the rain falls, where the water goes. We see things. We have experts in the community that can actually come to us and tell us. We had this one guy come to the class and he started telling me about the pipes that was put in, when they were put in, why they're corroded, why they're not big enough. A community member. You would have thought he was a public official or worked for the um, public works department. Okay, so, I'm sorry. So, outside assessment and um, a consultants is not the answer. The community is the answer. The work is being done in the community. I was one of those people in Marin City that knew what was going on but didn't know what to do until somebody took me to a couple of meetings and then I got excited about it. And I've been unemployed since last September, but I'm working on this assignment because this is something that needs to happen. It needs to happen from us, the people of Marin City, who knows Marin City. So I know that San Mateo County has a lot of people, a lot of cities, but you just wanna, you have to separate and work in each community not each city, because each city has tons of communities. Thank you for your time.